Well, we're joined now by Andrew Mamedu, who is the counter director of Action Aid, and Uche Odims, uh, uh, who is the project director of National Youth Summit uh, Africa. Let's start with uh, uh, Mamedu. Uh, good to see you, gentlemen. Uh, a whole lot happening, and the whole essence is uh, not to make the same mistakes uh, again. Uh, here we are. Uh, going around, and of course, uh, Action Aid has had extensive research on how to go about this. But let's first talk about uh, how uh, effectively uh, the government, with these new appointees, uh, can start rewriting the wrongs. Uh, Andrew. Yeah, thank you very much, Suleiman. Um, I think, first of all, is to learn from the previous mistake. So um, Action Aid, we were involved in the design of the framework when uh, President Muhammad Buhari came in and um, we were involved in the third party monitoring. We coordinated the third party monitoring where we worked with over 300 civil society organizations across the 36 states. Um, those civil society organizations were paid by government, but of course Action Aid wasn't paid by government because to ensure our neutrality and independence. And there were a lot of lessons we learned from that whole process. That was the best moment we had for the social investment program. I think that was during the time of um, Ajia Mariam Waze. And after that, things got worse and worse. And there were a lot of issues we picked from there, from the planning to the execution to political interference. So there are things that, uh, because of the nature of the engagement, there were a lot of things we brought to the table with government, and government was able to address them. But that whole mechanism was derailed. The bottom line is, the first thing is to ensure that this fund is seen as a fund for what it is, not as a slush fund. It is not coincidence that three persons have been Fingered. So it's not, it's not a coincidence. So it's seen as a slush fund. It's seen as there are some ministries, some agencies, some funds that are seen as such. So this is one of such funds that is seen as a slush fund. So definitely we then need to look at what is the framework that has been put in place that has set up this fund. And beyond the persons that have been appointed, but what is the framework that has been put in place? What is the role of the various individuals or groups that are involved in the implementation, monitoring and engagement of the whole of the whole process. I would tell you we have to start from the planning. Yeah. So the planning has to be right. Do we have a policy in place for the home groom school feeding program that is reviewed periodically? The last time we had the feeding for school, which was about over a year ago, last year January, 100 naira, sorry, 100 naira was the approved amount for feeding. 100 naira. Per head. And per head, per day. And clearly, that will not feed a child. And so if we have to revise and bring, that, bring, 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 bring back the program, which of course the president set up a team, which has looked at how do we improve the program. Right. Um, and that team has been able to come up with some suggestion, recommendation. And that's why we're having these persons. These okay. persons, what is their experience in terms of being citizens driven? The issues they are coming with, are they citizens driven? Are they coming from bottom up? If we don't, this is part of the measures. If we maybe if we have had this program running and running efficiently, the bad governance protests we're having today would not be because people were benefic benefiting then, but right now, of course, that has stopped and that, of course, triggered a whole lot of things. I'll, have, I'll give you some experience and some example of how yeah, that helped then. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Thank you so much for that uh, intervention. Let me bring in Uche, uh, Dr. Uche Odins. Um, where do we start from? I mean, you have been involved with uh, the youth for quite uh, a while. Now, in the recent, uh, in, in the last few days, Nigerians, especially the youth, have been pouring out into the streets saying, we're hungry, we're hungry, we're hungry. Now, number one, the states were actually given 570 billion naira in, as of December of 2023. Now, add that uh, to what has been, you know, uh, earmarked for humanitarian agencies. Now, the, gov uh, the government has come up with, you know, new helmsmen at the humanitarian agencies. What do you think needs to be fixed? Number one, first off, because some experts are saying, look, data, data, data is where you need to start from. You need to know where 
these people are to be able to get uh, you know this um, relief to them your thoughts okay thank you very much nice to be on the rise and uh, well done to what you guys are doing now um Constantly, we are the one interfacing with these people. Um, our organization, where we relate to thousands of young people around the country, millions over the years and all, there is um, there's a very, very, I mean, hardship. In fact, anything higher than hardship is what's currently going on right now, where the young people can't even afford to feed and all. And the truth is this, it's just like uh, my uh, friend out there said and all, that if these uh, ministry and all, if they've been functional, I'm sure probably will not be where we are right now. Because every day you come out on TV, you hear that the government is giving this to state, giving that to state and the rest of it, and it does not trickle down. Now, the big problem here is this, is that the federal government, they are not going about it the right way. They are not working with the right sets of people. And that's why it's like that. There are NGOs that are actually doing this thing with their personal funds. So, as far as I'm concerned, what the government are been doing all these years is actually giving political money to their political cronies. As simple as that. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, most of these people that this money get to, what they do is that they use it as settlement for people that voted for them. Are you seeing that? That's a very big problem. Now, monies that are meant for people, you got to look for people that uh, probably voted for you or are working with you or have political affiliation. We can't do that. We can't continue that way. And this part, I was excited when I heard that Mr. President actually set up this uh, whole stuff um, uh, with uh, Mr. Badamosi, the, the CEO, and the rest of it. I was excited, but there needs to be integrity in this particular, in this particular one they want to do. Integrity. And that integrity will be based on, number one, data. 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 Without data, forget about it. I mean, people just keep throwing figures in the air. We need to go down, the poor of the poor of the poor, to the local government area, to the councillors and all. I will actually advise that this time around, if we can employ the services of private organization, private organization, not just government-driven organization, to get the right data in this local government area. You see what's going on right now? There's uproar everywhere. I know even Mr. President, even the governors, everybody is just wearing our body and feeling cool, but they are bothered. That's the truth. And um, if they don't want to be bothered anymore, they need to trickle down these things to the right places in the country. Let's not play politics anymore with things that have to do with life for people. Whether people are in PDP, in APC, in Labour, RUPP, whatever P or whatever, nobody should play politics because hunger is very dangerous. And hunger is something that can make a man do what he or she does not want to do. So let it be a change this time around. Well, that's I think that's the, that's the whole essence while we're here. And I, I, I can feel your anger already, Uche, this is hardly you. And uh, for you to speak like this, it means uh, we really need to get down to basics. So, uh, uh, I come back to Andrew. Andrew, some of the key concerns will be that of coordination. Uh, how do they ultimately coordinate uh, between the agencies, uh, ministries, and uh, agencies like yourself to ensure that First, they are identified, and secondly, it gets to these people so identified. Yeah, thank you very much. So um, we have experienced the coordination challenge even within government. So um, the homegrown school feeding program is a typical example. So you have the Ministry of Agri, the Budget Office, um, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health. So all of them are involved in it. But in terms of coordination, once a commissioner is responsible for it, in the state, I'm, taking, I'm picking a state for instance, a commissioner is responsible for it and the commissioner calls for a meeting, other commissioner will like, why would a commissioner invite me? We are all co-commissioners and you've had that poor coordination across the board. And we tend to, we, we got more results when the program was in the vice president's office. So if the vice president calls for a meeting, everyone has got to engage. Unfortunately, we don't know where the, um, for instance, the homegrown school feeding program is going to sit. Is it going to still sit in the Ministry of Humanitarian? That was part of the argument or the debate uh, for the social investment program generally. Is it going to be moved to the budget office? Is it going to be moved to Ministry of Finance? Or is it going to be so? For us, if you go to where there will be that authority, once the person speaks, all the all that coordinating ministers that are involved in it would align. I think that's the first thing we need to do. The second thing is 
citizens have got to be involved in this. So uh, citizens from citizens, you've got civil society organization. So civil society organization have got to be involved in this. There is no way you will run this program successfully without having citizens being able to play that role of third party monitoring. Yeah. So beyond government monitoring it themselves, but we've got to have civil society organizations, how they are paid, how they are engaged. Of course, that will be what other organizations will do for organizations like us. We are not actually it is not interested in getting paid by government. We are able to engage and coordinate citizens to group to be able to monitor the program and get clear evidence. We have clear results. Let me give you one example before I, I stop this. So when we were in monitoring the program, there was a, there's a group called the political monitors. Political monitors emerge from the National Assembly. National Assembly like, okay, how can this budget pass and where our constituents are not involved? And they had to find a middle way of engaging or settling them, and they created political monitors. Right. Guess what? They were not involved in any monitoring, but they were paid every month just to have that political settlement. So those are the kind of things we need to avoid, involve, avoiding political involvement and interference in a program like this, or else right. we'll come back, and come back to the same um, Ed Band governors that we're currently running today. Yes, indeed. Unfortunately, we have to end it here. One of the other concerns, of course, is addressing the issue of corruption. You know, in the in most of these agencies in the Humanitarian Affairs Ministry, uh, Uche Odins, Dr. Uche Odins, Project Director, National Youth Summit Africa, Andrew Mamedu, Country Director, Action Aid. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us.